Hello everyone, this is Moses from Zotter Gardens. And this evening, I'm going to be answering a question or a request actually that I got online on just basically going through all of my fruit trees. The question, if I remember correctly, was what varieties or what kind of fruit trees do you have in your gardens? So in this video, I'm going to go through them, naming them, and maybe a little tidbit on each, maybe, uh, but it's going to go quick because uh, I have a lot of fruit trees. Now I have herbaceous plants, I have berries, I have, you know, things that may be considered a tree. I may go through that as well, like, you know, like a guava is kind of a tree, kind of isn't, and Barbados cherry kind of is a tree and isn't. I'm not going to go through every single characteristic of each tree. I have a playlist for that, a series, a plant information series. I'll put the playlist in the screen right now. That's where I go through I'm trying to go through every one of my fruit trees or any any one of my plants actually any plant I grow about everything I know of growing the plant in my microclimate so you can check that on the screen right now all right Lulu let's get going okay here we go we got an Espeliade 4-in-1 it's a gala a apple tree gala Fuji yellow transparent honey crisp behind that is an Albertina olive as you can see right here, a dwarf olive. Very good for pots, by the way. I'll consider it a tree, not really. This is a tamarillo right here. There's two of them, one and two back there. This is a celestial fig, uh, sugar fig, I believe they call it. Uh, we got a Barbados cherry right here. See how it kind of looks like a bush, but it's growing up. You see this? So it should become a six, seven foot tall tree. Okay, this is a uh fuji apple i believe that i grafted a whole other bunch of varieties onto it including just recently king david um that's grafted onto this tree but it's a fuji king david apple i heard is very good okay keep going no no there's another apple tree i have right here this is a granny smith and a whole bunch of other varieties on here including one of my favorite apples in the world the macintosh and there's a pink lady in um, yellow transparent and gala on here too. And here is my brand new air conditioner, everyone. Check this out. For all you ones that have been watching my videos, almost a thousand videos now, uh, or getting near it. Uh, my, I always had to apologize for the AC kicking on. Well, I solved that problem. Got a whole nice huge air conditioner. Nice and quiet and keeping the house nice and cool. Okay, let's keep going. This is a... Goji Sobs, I believe is the uh, name, or Green Sour Persian Plum, or an Armenian Genetic. Uh, here's one right here. You eat it just like that. You can let them uh, ripen up to an orange plum. It's nice and sweet, but you can hear the crunch. Okay, I'm going to consider these a tree in a way. These, this variety, or these varieties, only get about six feet tall. But some can get up to 15, even 20 feet tall sometimes. This is a sea berry or a sea buckthorn. There's two females and a male. Uh, the females are uh, Star of Altai, Orange Energy, and the male doesn't have a name. <laughs> Anyways, this is a Dapple Dandy Pluot. Full of fruit. Full. Completely full of fruit. So, this is my kumquat here nopales over there you can see the nopales trying to still get it to fruit but it's okay this is my kadota fig beautiful i just pruned it a little bit uh pre-summer prune because this can grow really tall look how beautiful it is uh this is my uh great aunt's uh seedling pomegranate off her tree she had a humongous fruit tr uh, pomegranate tree so I believe this is a Utah sweet or ever sweet it's a non-staining variety pomegranate okay we're gonna go right here this is newly planted I had one for a long time my favorite fruit tree is the Fuyu persimmon so I planted a new one right here painted it. Uh, it it passed away the old one I was very distraught over it so this is the first tree variety I ever purchased for this property uh, the Fuyu persimmon and this is the first tree my son ever picked the fruit off a tree so I had to buy another one so that's that's a Fuyu persimmon 
Okay, this is a Vernon Zapote. Uh, you can see some of the fruit, I believe, growing. Vernon Zapote, very delicious, very sweet. This is a, I'll go back a little bit, this is a Ultra Dwarf Weeping Santa Rosa Plum Tree. So, have you ever seen a plum tree or a stone fruit that's a, a weeping tree? I've never seen one, that's why I purchased it. This is a Subel Sapote here. This is delicious. This one tastes like banana custard. This is a, a, a delicacy. This one. Man. Okay, well, I'll talk about the ones in the back in a little bit. Just looking around, make sure I didn't miss anything. This is a flat peach or donut peach. I'll show you the production. Actually, let me get back here a little bit. This is the most aggressive tree I grow. I have to prune this down six times a year. And look how dark the leaves are on this tree. Now, I've thinned this like crazy, and I'll show you the production. This whole tree is laden with fruit. I mean, it, it doesn't stop. Probably will produce about 300 to 400 pieces of fruit this year. If I didn't thin, 800, but they'll be small and I'll have a lot of issues. Next to the peach, this is a sweet 16 apple, the one of the most complex tasting apples in the world. This is a Korneke olive, another dwarf olive tree. Let's go this way. This is a Lee Jujube. There's a ladybug right there. You can see it's flowering. Lee Jujube, if you want to grow a tree that you don't want to really worry about, it's the, it's the Jujube, especially Lee variety. This is my daughter's peach tree I planted when I, after she was born. This is an early Alberta yellow peach. That's why I planted it, because I don't have any yellow peaches. This is a Zutano that I did, that I neglected last year, and I will admit, but uh, while I was waiting for my daughter to be born, I had other priorities and I neglected my avocados. So you can see that they're flushing back new growth like crazy and they'll look beautiful in no time. So you can see the Mexicola, it's kind of raggedy because of the same reason. And I'm very um, depressed and uh, embarrassed. But you can see when I start putting in heavier wood chip mulching, paying attention more, painting more, foliar feeding with seaweed and fish emulsion, you can see everything's starting to come back. This is all going to be lush, pom-pom, avocado like it was years ago. You won't even be able to see the tree come the end of this year. Okay, this is a flavor grenade. I have a lot of seedlings of papayas right here. I just threw seedlings there. This is a flavor grenade pluot. This is one of the most explosive, hence the name grenade, uh, tasting fruits you've ever had in your life. You can see the production, right? How clustered, how thick it is. Let me see from another angle, right? Now imagine that cluster over this entire tree. So last year at this height, it produced, I think, 200, 250 fruit. I'm expecting the same, but I'm expecting bigger fruit this year. Just really delicious. Okay, right here, we're going on to the four in one stone fruit tree. This is the Belham apricot. This huge branch you see right here. This, this branch is the Santa Rosa plum. As you can see, just beautiful. This is the Babcock peach. It's full. And this is the Fantasia nectarine. You can see the nectarines. Always have problems with nectarines, including my other one you'll see in a moment. Always have problems with them. This is my all-in-one almond. We eat the almonds green with salt. Uh, I've just decided to let these ripen up. There's probably 70 more in a tree, but a whole bunch you can see scattered on the ground falling off. This is a super dwarf burgundy plum. This plum tree is, I believe, three years old or older now, probably four years old. It still has not grown 
vigorously above six feet and it's pretty good fruit production this year uh, I picked off a lot because I wanted to uh, grow more robust this year it uh, really uh, lagged behind last year so the really good plum the most productive plum tree I've ever grown is uh, is the burgundy plum by the way okay I had a guamuchil uh, in this pot it was planted here the guamuchil I tested it scratch test yesterday it was dead so that's a four-year-old tree gone uh, don't know why maybe too much water maybe not enough water it was in the ground for about two years I don't know regardless these are newly planted mangoes this is a manila mango and a glen so real heavy push of uh, growth um, then I tip this back so you can see it growing on the top so this is my ultimate test I'll keep updating you on this, but um, I'm not going to fail on this uh, because I really want my children to enjoy fresh mangoes. I'll even put barbecues out here in fire pits around this location if it freezes at night in the winter just to keep this alive. This is a moringa stump, so I hope it grows back. I do have another moringa right over here that's going to probably be a 20 foot tall tree this year. I have a Satsuma mandarin and a Meyer lemon or Meyer lemon. This is a Persian lime, full of limes by the way. It's amazing. This is a, I believe this is a, I don't know how to pronounce it correctly because it has a p apostrophe but it's a weird name. Du jour pear. Uh, there was a Bartlett over here but that was riddled, completely riddled with um, fire blight so I removed the whole thing and I replaced it with a bacon avocado you can see how gorgeous this avocado now see see how gorgeous this avocado looks beautiful right gorgeous right this is how those other avocados used to look when I really took care of them uh, avocados out of all the fruit trees I grow need the most help out of all of them the mangoes I'm not even doing anything to them and they're just they're pushing growth if I didn't help this along, this they're planted around the same time. This avocado and those mangoes. I don't pay attention to those mangoes at all. Maybe water them once in a while. I have to water this almost every day and foliar feed it to get this nice looking healthy growth. If I don't, you could tell because all this cluster of leaves will start wilting. Avocados take a lot more work. Okay, this is the moringa. Like I said, you can see the growth coming from everywhere. Uh, good stout trunk right here. This will be a Like I said, maybe maybe 18 to 20 feet tall this year. I'm, I'm gonna prune off all flowers I already got enough pods of last year. I don't want any more uh, Seed pods this year. I'm not gonna eat them. I had them in soup. It was pretty good, but I want this to grow Okay, this is a cherimoya from rootstock So look how big and nice and beautiful this um, cherimoya is just beautiful, really. I tip pruned all of it, so everything got tip pruned. I, did, I, I tip pruned a lot um, the other day to help promote m growth. Nothing grows trees faster than pruning them, even if you tip prune. This is a Greek bay tree in a pot, uh, bay laurel, beautiful, great smelling, but I actually collect this for the flowers before they open up. When the flat when it flowers and produces that uh, uh, the closed blossom before it opens, you cut that off and dry it. That is the most potent bay taste or smell you can have. One of those is like having 20 leaves. This is I would consider this a tree because it can get very large. This is the staghorn sumac, beautiful plant. Uh, if you want to have a tropical look in your garden. And you can't grow any tropical plants grow a staghorn sumac look at that now <laughs> don't grow it in the ground unless you have a big big yard but other than that keep keep it in a pot because this is one of the most invasive plants that you can grow other than mint i will never ever plant mint in my garden in the ground here's more papayas in a pot 
That's solo variety that will be planted in the ground soon. So these are all moringas, and this is very special. There's two, two, and two. These are very special because this came from the mother moringa tree that grew here. So these seedlings should be way more acclimated to this area than those trees that came from, I believe, India when I bought those seeds. Uh, the, I'll just tell you right now that you see how dark green these leaves are and how small they are for having such big leaves in this height in this size uh, these are doing way much better than those original moringas so we'll see how they they do okay this is this here is a string of Mexican papaya right here all that so I'll just pick probably the best five you see one of the last ones from last year survived actually I thought it died but I maybe because it's so small and the other was, ones were big that I, I, I didn't notice this one and it was more protected for some reason with the frost and everything. Now this wall here will help bring up the heat for this uh, papaya. That's why none of them really died from uh, the cold. They died from root rot, unfortunately. Something uh, I can easily fix actually. This is a pink lady or Chris Pink. I think that's the same name to be honest for the same apple uh, with a honey crisp grafted onto it too. It had in other varieties, but when I removed these trees, they fell on this tree and broke those uh, grafts off. So pink lady, this is a the largest nectarine that I've ever grown. Uh, this is the heavenly white nectarine. This nectarine will be this big. You could barely even hold it like that. You'll have to take like two to three bites, big bites to get to the to the seed in the middle. That's how big these uh, nectarines can get. This is an Italian prune. This is a, the one that I get questions a lot about. This is my flavor, the light aprium, full of fruit. Take a look. I'll show you right here. Look at all this. Flavor to light aprium. So this is, uh, I think, parentage, 75% uh, apricot, 25% plum, I believe. And um, if you want to know what the best tasting apricot, it's an aprium, but let's just say it's an apricot for right now, because it does look like an apricot if you think about it. Uh, this is the best tasting apricot you've ever tasted in your life. So flavor, delight, aprium. This is my Parfianca pomegranate nice and big now especially that i took off the tag <laughs> three years in the ground didn't know why it was yellowing and uh and not growing much is because i left the uh, tag on the base underneath the wood chips so i never saw it until i saw something i thought was mycelium growth from beneath and realized that looks too white and that was the the variety name still wrapped around the trunk so when i removed it I got huge as you can see right now. Okay, now I'm in the front yard. This is where I have a pineapple guava, another pineapple guava, a Italian prune, just tons of fruit on it by the way, strawberry guava, they're about to flower. They just were planted, I don't know, about a month ago. A Stella cherry that we take a lot of cherries off because I can't wait on it to get fully ripe because the birds will get to them. This is a Valet de Bordeaux fig. Now look at that. Oh, look at this. Jeez. Some of them are almost ready. So I, you tip prune this variety because it, it doesn't grow that fast, but when you tip prune, it shoots out a lot more growth. As you can see, when you prune a tree, they'll grow faster because there was no growth at all, slowly growing. Uh, and once I tip prune, you got tons of shoots coming out. So just tip prune your plants if you're having problems with them growing. This is a pistachio, you can see here, a lot of comments that I get about you can't grow pistachios or some people say you may not have enough chill hours. I am surrounded by millions and millions of almond 
and pistachio trees. I live in Central California Zone 9B. These will produce for me. They will produce the, the nut with, within the shell. Trust me, it will happen. Uh, if it doesn't, that means I screwed up something. This is another Fuyu persimmon back from the dead. The one you saw planted in the back was a replacement for this because this died back severely and I thought it was dead completely. But um, uh, it started growing after I got my uh, fresh one. So, but more, way more than half the tree died back. So they gave me another one. These are two elderberries. I'll consider those trees. These varieties only get about six to eight feet tall. Uh, some varieties can get up to 20 feet tall. Um, really like a shrub, but regardless, uh, this is a Nova and a York. This right here is a fruitless olive. I just love the way olive trees look. Um, this is a Rio Red grapefruit. Let me show you the production. Last year was crazy production. Uh, just imagine every branch tip has this. You see? Keeps going. I won't film everything, but just imagine every branch, almost every branch tip has that. And this is a moral blood orange. You can see the production on this. Just amazing. I don't know why people don't grow their more of their own food, especially these times. Stop going to the supermarket for everything. Now, it only produced a lot when I opened the center up, like a stone fruit tree. It's very weird. Grio Red likes to be like an umbrella, wants to go nice and long and then phew, droop down. And this one here needs to be an open center, then it'll start producing. Other than that, it never produced. Once I started opening the center up and getting airflow through here, scales ended, mealybugs ended, there are no more black ants, there's no more fungal issues, and there's tons of production. This right here is my pineapple plant in the house, and right here is my coffee tree. Beautiful, beautiful leaves. So let me know in the comments if you have any questions about particular plants you just saw or uh, any other plants you want me to add to the plant information series where I elaborate more on my experience with that particular plant. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tour. And once again, for the 935th time, happy gardening.